All right, so a couple people asked that I've kind of gone through this guitar thing, what, what my bass thing is. It's This is a an A Designs KGB ITF. It's kind of like a bass, it's an instrument preamplifier. It's kind of like a powered DI. And I mess with it and I, and I have, just flat is is good, flat is flat. Um, it's, it's, I, I kind of like the DI for guitar better into the BAE Neve, but for bass, this is what I use. And then it, it has a through, which goes to the Sans amp. And then it also, for, you know, my bass goes into the radial headlight, splits out to the, the DI, the A designs, comes out the through into the, Axe effects, but also out of here it splits into the axe effects, and I just set up a little profile or a, a preset, like an SVT pre preset. And I actually just set all this up last night because normally I use the Kemper. I have an SVT profile or whatever you call it. I can't think of what they're called, but yeah, profile. It's that's nice, but I don't. I'm, I think I'm thinking. I'm, I think I'm going to just dump the Kemper. I'm not using it. Got to keep it little little more simple so uh anyway i'm going to take you guys through my template and uh yeah here we go mm -hmm. all right so um yeah that'll work um somebody asked about my bass setup so um, I've got a couple bases. I got this is a P base with Seymour Duncan quarter pounders. It's a Mexican base. I don't know. I've had it maybe 15 years. Pretty perfect. Um, and I've also got a uh, an Ibanez like a five string fan fret active passive with soap bars. You know more like modern rock i actually i did a i did a church i did i played bass today on on a four song like kind of gospel church uh ep and i i grabbed because you know i think of like those church guys and they always play those like i don't know i always think of them like big olympics or sadowskis or i, I don't know they, i always think of them like more active more like r b kind of guys okay so uh so like i explained here are the three tracks so we'll start here we'll ungroup this so here's the bass di so i'll mute these and uh yeah you can hear it uh, you can hear it Bass DI, pretty clean. Bass Sans is the Sans amp. That's this. It's a little more gritty, has more of an ampy feel. More like kind of SVT ish. And I mean, I could do it with just these. I could just do it with the DI, but I mean, that's the Nashville thing. Anyway, I just figure, hey, the more I track when I go to mix, it gives me more options. Because sometimes I don't really like the sound of a DI. I know it's weird. And then my third track is my bass axe. This is axe effects, which I used to use uh, the Kemper, but now I've, I just made this profile yesterday. Nothing's extreme gain or anything. It's just neutral. And then, you know, they can all uh, be hit harder. And I do the same thing here to watch this. I do the same thing I do with guitars. I've got all three of them. I go, I hit record, and I do the tick tick. Right? I usually use a pick for the tick tick. Just because it has more of an edge than the fingers. So if I come here and open this up, you will see that they all look, for the most part, good. Sometimes it's deceiving. That's going down first. That's going down first. I'll take these two as being completely in time. 
FDI Sanzam. And now I'll come here and yeah, I already have it set like this. The top thing would be samples. Now, if I go from like the first peak transient, right? I wanna line these three up. So I come from, let's say here, right? Here's kind of the peak transient, right? And I come to the peak transient on the axe effects, which is later, probably because there's more processing in the axe effects. And there you go, it's like 128 samples. Let's just say, yeah, let's for argument. Well, no, it's like, I think I thought it was originally 105, but let's just say whatever, one, one, 120. Right? Now, what you'll see that I've done, watch this. This is really, really good stuff. Is um, I put time adjusters in the first slot on all three tracks. So you see, base DI, and then you see time adjuster, time adjuster. Remember, these two need to come back about 105, 110 samples. The time adjuster, the minimum it's set to is uh, minus four. So anything you want to subtract from it, you have to subtract that extra four. So let me show you something. So here's the base, the axe. The axe time adjuster is just set at four samples. That's the minimum. You can't set it to zero, right? Now, the other two, look. See, that's 110 samples. So it's it's within a, you know, you could you could make this, let's just say, let's just go 115. It doesn't matter. And then I go to the time adjuster here. Uh, we'll make that also 115. That's the time adjuster on the sans amp. So now... When I when I hit record, I don't know that you'd necessarily hear it when you're recording. It doesn't matter. You can't really hear this that much anyway, but. Sorry for the guitar player, bass playing. But see, and there's our levels. Levels are good. So now if I go out of, let's say, record mode. So in theory, these first two tracks here are like 110 samples ahead. But now I've got them time adjusted. So now when you listen to it, polarity is good, meaning they go up at the same time, or they initiate the same way, and they are now gonna be landing correct. That's a great bass sound to me, right? And you can, you can from there you can, here's just the DI. Key bassy, right? Now you go to the, open the sans amp only. Sounds like the sans amp plugin, right? It's very kind of SVT, little grit. And then we've got our SVT preset here in uh, Axe Effects. Uh, in Axe Effects. Right, and now from that pro from that preset, um, I can I can gain it up. I've got drives on there. I can add drive to it. I can do anything I want. It, there's nothing on it. It's real neutral because it's just my template. It's where I start, right? So, so there it is. So then you go all of them, and now you got them all. Right, a little bit of on the bottom, but that's okay. So we're gonna loop it. Sans amp is so rock and roll.
the axe effects why and so that, that that you got these things and also you can do stuff there's some stuff in the preset thing like there, there's where you can cut all of the top end off on the di and just get the di to just be like you know and then you just bleed it in you can also take once you've got it all comped and you've got your tracks you can just duplicate your di have a regular di then the other di you can just just cut all of it and you can also use it as like to 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 trigger things or you can gate the kick to the to the to the to the bass so that when the kick hits the bass kind of just ducks a little bit we did that on that that new uh country record which is it looks like it's going down man yeah so anyway there it is so you know let's just say for now just for argument just just do ba we're just going to do uh um just di primary sands down from there and you know whatever right That's the kind of that's kind of the sounds that I like for a lot of the rock stuff and the pop stuff and even the country stuff. And then from there again, you can do whatever blend. And you can see that these are slightly these top two tracks are slightly ahead of this. But with the tick tick, we know exactly how far ahead it is, right? We look here. Yeah, there it is. And you know, it's this is a minimal bump on the on the axe effects, but it's because the the amp isn't super active, so there's your there's your whatever you know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see now it's showing like, so let's say seventy samples. It will shift, so you just gotta stay with it. And no matter like if you set it up, like you can't just uh, you can't just open up the session. Or pull in the template and do exactly what it says as far as the the time adjuster. You have to check because every for some reason everything's always changing. Maybe it depends on sample rate. I'm at 44.1. Obviously, if I was at 88.2, it would be twice as many samples. Um, or if we let's say we just change, you know, the profile or the preset in uh, in Axe Effects, it can it can make it. Uh, maybe a little more delayed or a little faster you can also sometimes flip the polarity so instead of it going down first it now goes up first so then in that case you would come here and you would see that little switch right there that little ding ding that's your that's your flip phase flip and there it is so now i've flipped so let, let's see if we can do this hold on one second well this is it this is i, I, I gotta go i'm at war with my kids i have to get back to war Right, so here we go. Yeah, I mean, I'm a guitar player, but I play on I play on almost every record. I can play good bass lines once I'm locked in. So now, if I come here, should be pretty good. We're listening with time adjuster. Well, it's taken flip the phase. This is how you can tell if how the phase is. If it starts to sound like it's coming out of a can, we'll kill Sans amp. So we'll just go with the DI again. If I flip this and it sounds like it's a can, that means that it was right. If if I flip it and it sounds better, and then this sounds like a can, then it, then I was wrong. So here it is, no flip. Now if I flip it. is hollow but now that's that's right but here's the other thing sometimes them being at a phase can sound cool don't let anybody tell you that it never works trust me and you know what i've done i've made mistakes and built guitar sounds around a a, a, a screw up you know i i made them I, I i don't know I, I misjudged something or i was spaced it or I, I thought I adjusted it, or and I didn't, and then 
I get done with the record and I'm like, I realize like, oh, these, this is like, this is not, and, I'm, and then when I make it right, it's, it sounds lame. So I don't think there's an exact, like, this is the way we do it and that's it. I mean, the way we can do phase and polarity now is down to the sample, right? Like four, there's 44,100 samples per second or whatever, right? So that's how, you know, my heroes, the records that I grew up loving, this didn't exist and they were fine. So you didn't, you didn't have to be such a nutcase. I used to be so caught up in sample accurate and now I'm like, it's fine. You know, like if it's off, but you know, I, I get, I just, yeah. <laughs> the guy that got me into this was like a nutcase about it. So it kind of made me a nutcase. But anyway, there it is. There's my base rig. I use this and I use that active uh, five string. It's electric, he e EHB, electric headless bass. 1,500, 5, 1,500. It's, it's Ibanez. It's really nice. It's really, really nice. It's fan fret, but for some reason, I, I'm, I'm cool playing it. I don't play, I don't care for fan fret guitars because of the way I play. It's like, you know, the bass, it's fine. So. There it is. James Lugo's bass rig.